The very first waveform that we get to see in an ECG is the P wave, which represents atrial depolarization. The holy grail of ECG that you have to remember is that one small square is equal to one millimeter, which is equal to 0 0.04 second. Based on that understanding, let us understand the morphology of a normal P wave. The morphology of a normal P wave is something like this in which you will get to see that the breadth of this normal ECG is approximately around three small square and the height of this EC P wave is normally within 2.5 small square. This is a normal P wave. Now this normal P wave is contributed by both the right atrium as well as left atrium. So the Atrial depolarization is both right atrial depolarization as well as left atrial depolarization. Now we all know that the pacemaker is situated, the natural pacemaker is situated in the ASA node of the right atrium and hence the right atrium undergoes depolarization a bit early than the left atrium. So the right atrial depolarization is a bit early than the left atrial depolarization. So this is this blue is our right atrial depolarization and just after that starts our left atrial depolarization. They two together form the P wave. Now P wave abnormality can be of two types. A P wave can be a taller P wave as in this case in which we get to see that the breadth of the P wave is again same, which is approximately three small squares, but the height of the P wave is way more. That is more than 2.5 small squares. This happens in a condition which is known as your right atrial hypertrophy. In right atrial hypertrophy, as the muscle mass is more, the electrical impulse generated by right atrial hyper or depolarization is of greater amplitude compared to that caused by the left atrial depolarization, which remains of normal amplitude. So by that, you get a taller P wave. Then we can get another type of abnormality in P wave that is a broader P wave. Now in broader P wave the abnormality that we get to see is that the P wave is broad. That means the width of the P wave or the breadth of the P wave is more than three small squares. However, the height remains within the normal range that is approximately 2.5 small squares. Now, this happens in a condition known as left ventricular hypertrophy, left arterial hypertrophy. As the left atrial mass increases, the left atria gives a independent and tall peak and takes depolarization time more and gets way more separated than the right atrial, atrial depolarization peak. And hence, not only they together form two sep temporally separated peaks, they create a notch in the wave of the P. And that notch leads to formation of something known as a bifid P wave. So broad bifid P wave is representative of left atrial hypertrophy, taller P wave is representative of right atrial hypertrophy. 